Good evening and thank you for joining us on this Sunday. I'm Phil Anaya. Search crews are still looking for a missing San Antonio man. People gathered on Gambler Road in East San Antonio this morning to search for 35 year old Kirk Jones. Now Jones has been missing since June 3rd. Search and Rescue SATX is assisting in that search. They chose that location because they say that is the last place his phone was shown to be in. The search crew was using a plastic bag with Jones's shoe inside. The team says that helps concentrate Jones's scent. They began their search this morning and are focused on finding Jones's phone. In a search and rescue group, the dog can do way more than we can. He's got the heightened sense of smell and everything. He can find things that we would have missed or never seen. Now here's some details you should know about. Jones is a white male with brown hair and brown eyes. He's 6'3 and weighs about 200 pounds. He was last seen on Almost Creek in North Central San Antonio. Anyone with information on his whereabouts is asked to call the San Antonio Police Department. That number is 210-207-7660. Now coming up tonight at 10, hear from Jones's mother and what she believes may have happened to her son. Meanwhile, a man is dead after being shot in the head during a large party in a private field early this morning. Around 3.30 a.m., SAPD and the fire department responded to a field south of Loop 410 for a shooting. When police arrived, they found a party with over 100 people in a private field and a man who had been shot in the head. Officers found several rifle casings. The victim died at the scene. Police said that there was a large fight that turned violent and led to people shooting. Many of the party goers were detained and officers said that they were working to find any witnesses. Police said that there is no motive or suspect in the shooting yet. And police are looking for the driver of a car who they say hit a man on Barrera Parkway. It happened Friday, April 30th, around 9.41 p.m. The 59-year-old victim got off a VIA bus and was walking through a car wash when a white four-door hatchback ran him over, causing a serious brain injury and breaking his leg. If you know anything about this incident, call Crime Stoppers or police. Crime Stoppers may pay up to $5,000 for information leading to an arrest. And we have an update now on two men accused of robbing pharmacies in South Texas. One suspect has turned himself in. Take a look at these two men. They're accused of robbing those pharmacies. The Guadalupe County Crime Stoppers is offering up to $2,000 if you can help them make an arrest. On the left is 38-year-old Andre Dupree Jack. On the right is Azteco Factor. Factor is now in custody. He turned himself in today. Factor is being held at the Guadalupe County Detention Center. Police are still looking for Andre Dupree Jack. Anyone with information on his whereabouts is encouraged to call the Guadalupe County Crime Stoppers. They were both wanted for a string of robberies in Seguin and Pleasanton. Police say Jack is armed and dangerous. Another mid-air disturbance, this time an off-duty flight attendant disrupted a Delta Airlines flight forcing an emergency landing. Passengers had to intervene along with other crew, and it's not the first time. Rick Montanez has more on why we seem to be hearing more and more about these cases lately. Another scare in the sky, this time on board a Delta flight out of LAX. Several people take down a man at the front of the plane. Passengers say they first heard a strange announcement from that man. And said, everyone, please take your seat um, and get ready to put on an oxygen mask and then attempted to open the door of the plane. Delta Airlines confirms it was an off-duty flight attendant who was subdued by the flight crew. Passengers say the pilot even called for help. The pilot made an announcement and said, all able-bodied men, please come to the forward. There's an emergency. Come to the front. This comes as the FAA reports a disturbing rise in passenger disruptions this year. Passengers at LAX say it's a troubling pattern. Of course, it's distressful, but you know, you you kind of weigh those pros and cons, especially whenever you're wanting to travel. Mo Gelbart, the director of behavioral health at the Torrance Memorial Medical Center, says society as a whole is likely dealing with PTSD related to the pandemic. As we near its end, that light at the end of the tunnel, stress, anxiety, and depression can boil over. Something triggered those people. You know, they weren't trying to hijack the plane, so something triggered them. You know, or so it's, it's you know similar to maybe road rage. Well, some travelers worry. Others say dealing with an unruly passenger is a risk you take on any flight. So I think we should abide by the rules um, and try not to give the the flight attendants, the flight crew, a hard time. So how do we keep the stress from taking over? Gelbart says try using a calming app or listening to some music, and make sure to take deep breaths. At LAX, Rick Montanez, CBS Two News.
There's a new milestone in America's COVID recovery. The TSA screened more than 2 million people at airports on Friday. That's a pandemic record and four times the number screened on the same day last year. Now, crowds filled the Los Angeles beaches and streets Saturday for what will be the last mandatory mask wearing weekend for most Californians. The state, with the lowest COVID case rate in the country, fully reopens Tuesday after more than 15 months of emergency restrictions ordered by Governor Gavin Newsom. 142 million people in the United States are now fully vaccinated and cities with high vaccination rates like the city of Chicago are just racing to reopen. More than 35,000 fans packed Wrigley Field with Cubs superfan Bill Murray welcoming the crowd. This is what it feels like to be 100% well said. Now, still not everyone is celebrating. Federal unemployment benefits are being cut off early to millions in 25 Republican-led states as of Saturday with Alaska, Iowa, Missouri, and Mississippi as governors push to get people back to work. And COVID does remain a threat. The U.S. death toll is now nearing 600,000. And the Delta variant remains a concern for states with low vaccination rates. President Joe Biden has invited Britain's Queen Elizabeth to the White House after she hosted him and the First Lady at Windsor Castle today. Ian Lee is in Windsor, England with more on the president's first foreign trip. The president dropped in for a cup of tea with the queen. But first, he received a royal salute at Windsor Castle. Queen Elizabeth greeted Mr. Biden and the First Lady. The president continued the long tradition of inspecting the queen's troops. Outside the castle, the visit was the talk of Windsor. And with President Biden coming in today to Windsor Castle, uh, I'm very, very hopeful. The Assales family from Florida says the meeting makes them proud to be Americans. To have this new start because there's so much like went wrong over the past like four years. Mr. Biden is the 13th U.S. president to meet the queen during her nearly 70 years on the throne. In 1957, Dwight D. Eisenhower hosted the Queen on her first state visit to the U.S. She rode horses with Ronald Reagan in 1982 and more recently met Presidents Obama and Trump. President Biden says the Queen reminds him of his mother. In terms of the, the look of her and the, you know, just the generosity. Tea with the Queen capped off what the President called a productive G7 summit. Everyone at the table understood and understands both the seriousness and the challenges that we are up against. Leaders pledged more than a billion COVID vaccines to nations in need and a tougher stance on climate change. The president's next stop is Brussels, where he'll meet again with world leaders at the NATO summit. Ian Lee, CBS News, Windsor, England. Unfortunately, too many San Antonio kids go hungry once school is out for the year. And so that's why Ken's Five and our friends at the San Antonio, San Antonio Food Bank want to help feed children. We hope to collect enough for 25 million meals and we'll let you know how you can help us out. So many of you turned out to help last week. We'll have another event like this one collecting food items and cash next Wednesday. You can drop off donations at the HEB located on Bandera and 1604 from 4 p.m until 6.30. Now you can feed seven kids uh, one meal for just $1. For more information, just go to kens5.com slash summer meals. Let's send things over to Megan real quick. And speaking of summer, it definitely feels like it. We have triple digit heat indices 101 there on the northwest side of San Antonio and 105 degrees at Calaveras Lake. Seeing lots of sunshine in our cloud and our uh, sky, I should say, will remain mostly clear tonight with low temperatures and the low to upper 70s. Slim rain chances return on Monday, so I'll talk more about the rain. Of course, summer can be a fun time for kids, but the dangers of them getting hurt does increase during the summer months. So coming up, a local group has tips on how to keep your family safe. Many of us have tackled our annual spring cleaning, but it's also a great time to get your finances in order too. Really good time to establish smart shopping habits. How do you get your post pandemic finances in order? Eyewitness wants to know Monday at 10. Hitting all the right notes with chords that touch the heart. Hi, I'm Barry Davis. Monday on Eyewitness News this morning, the San Antonio teenager writing the next chapter in the Texas Conjunto legacy. Monday morning at six on Ken's five. 
All right, school is out, summer is here, and the kids are ready to head out and enjoy the great outdoors and activities. But that could increase the risk of getting injured. Eyewitness News reporter Vanessa Croy spoke with a local organization with some tips on keeping your family safe. Primarily, it's because people are out moving around more, right? People are biking, uh, swimming, boating. Don Dixon is with the local nonprofit called Connectability. Work primarily with people who've had traumatic brain injury, spinal cord injury, stroke, amputation, those kinds of life altering types of, of disabilities. Connectability also offers support groups for people with all types of disabilities and their caregivers. Dixon said the number of trauma injuries is twice as high in the summer months. Get one fall and, a, and, a, and hit your head on a on a curb can, can cause a traumatic brain injury. And with so many activities going on in the summer, Dixon said the most important thing to prevent injury is to wear a helmet, but also pay attention to what's happening around you. Many times you're you're on a sidewalk, you're you're you may be with friends talking, um, you're not necessarily paying attention to what's right around you. For example, a car or, or other pedestrians or a bicycle. Um, so I think that that's really important that you constantly be aware of your surroundings. Connectability serves Bear County and the surrounding areas. Vanessa Croy, Ken's 5 Eyewitness News. Space tourism is officially a thing, but of course, only if you have a lot of money. Coming up, who is headed to the edge of space and how much you can pay to do something similar? Some people's va summer vacation plans are truly out of this world. For example, billionaire Jeff Bezos is planning a joyride into the cosmos next month. Saturday, someone bid $28 million to join him. In all, the auction drew more than 7,500 bids from 159 countries. In Blue Origin's vision, your ticket to space is a rocket away. Company founder Jeff Bezos will go up first next month. That is, you know, proving confidence in your product. It's an 11 minute flight to the edge of space, and this is likely just the beginning of space tourism as private companies are turning science fiction into reality. Sir Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic intends to fly customers on suborbital flights next year. 600 people prepaid up to a quarter million dollars each for a future seat. I think a lot of people want to go for many different reasons to bring meaning to their lives, to do something different. But I also think some people just want to go because they can afford it and it's going to be a lot of fun. Now, there are several packages available to the International Space Station, even a planned orbit around the moon. But lots of unanswered questions. Is the space tourism market sustainable? What about the risk and access? Today's ticket prices defy gravity and, of course, most people's budgets. I can confirm defies the journalist budget. All right, well, we are giving away two Ken's 5 Fiesta medals in a contest this year. They are the Ken's 5 70th anniversary medal you just saw right there and the Wheel of Fortune medal. For your chance to win, just download the Ken's 5 app on your phone and look for the entry form. Lucky winners will receive both medals free courtesy of Ken's 5. And here's another sign that Fiesta is just days away. Take a look at this. The parking lot of the Alamo Dome is being transformed into a playground. The Fiesta Carnival is taking shape in parking lot C. The carnival opens on Thursday. Admission is free. Rides, games, and food can be purchased separately. The fun starts every night at 5 p.m. and it runs through June 27th. All right, well, with that said, Megan, we are just days away from Fiesta kicking off on Thursday, but this will be a different Fiesta for a couple of obvious reasons. One, <laughs> it's in the summertime, but because right. of that, it's gonna be a lot hotter this year when you go out to, to enjoy Fiesta. Yeah, we're actually looking at triple digit heat indices, not only right now, Phil, but also through the upcoming week. It feels like 101 degrees right now in the city, 105 right now in Floresville, 99 just shy of the triple digits in Seguin. Us looking at a mostly sunny sky and tonight our sky will stay clear. Now, as far as forecast low temperatures, a lot of us will actually fall back into the low and mid 70s. 74 will be our forecast forecast low in San Antonio, mid 70s there in Pleasanton, upper 70s for some of our southwestern areas. And look at that, even a low of 80 possible there in Eagle Pass in Maverick County. We're still looking at a lot of sunshine on Monday, but slim rain chances return and temperatures will actually rebound back into the upper 90s. I know you're probably looking at that 80 degrees in Hondo and thinking, are we going to reach 80? Well, this model's a little on the cooler side for you guys there in Hondo. I think a lot of us are overall looking at temperatures in the
the mid and upper 90s tomorrow afternoon. But don't be fooled, even though we hit 96 in San Antonio, we'll have a heat index right around 103 degrees, and it will be a hot and humid start to the work week, but there's that slim rain chance I was talking about. We'll hang on to a 20% chance of rain Monday evening into Tuesday morning. Overall temperatures right around normal for this time of year, but we're also looking at an increase in scattered showers by midweek, so we only have that 30% chance of rain, but regardless of temperatures falling, just a little bit Tuesday into Wednesday. I mean, it's still going to feel like uh, right around 100 degrees. Of course, all eyes on the tropics. The first official start to hurricane season was June 1st. National Hurricane Center still watching this area of low pressure that has strengthened within the last 24 hours, still at a medium chance of developing within the next five days, and it could become a tropical depression right over the southwestern portions of the Gulf of Mexico mid to late this upcoming week. So, you know, Gulf Coast communities will definitely have to monitor this system over the next several days. It could bring scattered showers and storms from Corpus Christi all the way east toward the Florida Panhandle. So that's why we'll have to monitor it. For us here at home, still looking at highs in the low to upper 90s Monday, Tuesday into Wednesday. We're still hanging on to slim rain chances Thursday into Friday. Also next Saturday, it's only a 10% chance of rain. So for those that want to enjoy Fiesta begin Thursday, no need to worry. We're not looking at a washout on our seven day forecast. But definitely. All right. Thank you, Megan. All right. Coming up in sports, we're going to get in on San Antonio missions. Plus the NBA playoffs. Ross is on the way and she's got your high and more. What better way to play in, than to start off against my uh, my hometown team, right? Uh, the team that I, I've uh, I've watched since I was a little kid, and uh, I've cheered for for my entire life. Um, but you know how it goes. I mean, I'm a, I'm a chief right now, and uh, you know, good luck to all the brownies out there. Good luck to all the brownies, indeed. That was Travis Kelsey making an appearance at the Jarvis Landry annual celebrity softball game, showing his excitement about the upcoming season and looking forward to kicking it off against his home town team. Now, speaking of hometown teams, Mission Baseball and Action Day welcoming Midland. We're going to pick things up in the bottom of the second. Midland is up two to one. Now, right there, though, before we get started, that is my favorite mascot. Just to throw that out there. Can't wait to get a picture with him when I go to one of the games. Like I mentioned, Midland is up two to one. Jack Sawinski gets things going with a solo home run to center left. Mission's down only by one, two to one the score. We have Michael Curry up next. He's on the bag looking to turn two. He has a single RBI. He brings in Alan Cordoba to tie it up at two. So we're still in the second. Jose right here, he's going to single to bring home another run. Mission scoring five runs in the second alone. I'll have a final score tonight at 10. Astros and Rangers in action today. Houston taking the series against the Twins, while the Rangers, they're trying to not get swept by the Dodgers. We're going to pick things up in the top of the fourth for Houston and Minnesota. Astros up 1-0. to zero. Kyle Tucker goes deep to center with a man on for the two-run home run. 3-0 to zero Astros. Top of the six now. Astros up 7-1. to one. Jordan Alvarez goes deep and it's gone right center to uh, right to center with a man on a two run homer nine to one Astros on top. The bats are hot as we move to the top of the eighth. Now it's 11 to two Astros. McCormick launches one to center off Matt Shoemaker for the long solo home run homers all day long. 12 to two after that and Houston killing the twins with a final of 14 to three. Playoffs continuing for basketball. Two matchups today, the Bucks and the Nets, and then the Suns and the Nuggets. Brooklyn leads the series walking into this contest, so we're going to jump to the second quarter. Giannis getting the ball in the low post and muzzles his way to the basket for the layup. 34-25 Nets. Giannis again, this time with the fast break. Uh, slam dunk right here. Bucks ahead by one. On the other end of the co court, Kyrie Irving injures his leg after coming down from a layout layup. Check the replay right there. You can see that his uh, his ankle tweaks right there. Oh gosh, X-rays were taken and came back negative. He's going to undergo more tests and treatments. We'll update you when we get more information. 57 seconds left in the second quarter right here. Giannis was fouled on the tough layup. Bucks come out on top and they stay alive 107-96. The series now tied at two. Game five scheduled for Tuesday. 
It's go big or go home for the Nuggets today as the Suns lead the series 3-0. Denver no stranger to having their backs against the wall. In the 2020 playoffs, they made two comebacks after bringing down 3-1. They would be making history if they came back against the Suns as no NBA team has ever been able to do so from a 3-0 deficit. Tip-off for the game is set for tonight at 7 p.m. Garrick Higo passing Chesson Hadley to make the Palmetto Championship earning his first PGA Tour win. The 22-year-old South African has won three times on the European Tour. Now he comes to the States. He closed out today with a three under par 68 and took advantage of Hadley's late collapse to win. Higo started six shots back and his comeback in the final round is the largest this season on the PGA Tour. It's amazing. I just stayed patient all week. Um, I've worked so hard with my coach Cliff on my short game and my putting. Um, and all the guys are titleist, you know, um, and I guess all that has paid off. Awesome. Big congrats to him. Uh, Erica, thank you so much. You're welcome. And thank you all for joining us. That's Eyewitness News at 530. We hope to see you back here coming up for Eyewitness News at 10.